Only here, Mr. Knapp is absent. Mr. Tolbert, here, Mr. Lennon. Mr. Livingston, here. And I'm Jim Howells, you have the floor. All right, and uh, do we have public comments from? Yes, yes. thank you. Thank you very much. So briefly, um, at, our, at your last meeting, I mentioned about uh, traffic, and that while we are focused right now on flooding, separately and in parallel, it would be a good idea to begin the process of requesting some proposals to look at traffic. Um, this is not in, in place of, this is not part, this is separate from what is going to come later today at this meeting, which I am looking so forward to. I mean, the flooding has been such a problem for our community. But doing, but getting some proposals on traffic will be a very, very beneficial thing. I don't think it would take much to ask for some proposals. When you're talking about traffic, it's a very general. Oh, sure, sure. Let, me, let me be very specific. Thank you. Um, a, uh, I would hope that the Planning Commission would ask for a proposal to look at improving the corridor from uh, Bower Hill Road, from Painters Run Road in Bower Hill, all the way down Bower Hill Road. Where it, where it comes through the flood project that they're about to talk about between the block and run and Commercial Street, but then continuing on Washington Avenue to join up with the already analyzed area from the railroad bridge on Washington Avenue through Chuck E. Cheese and the Church of Southern Shopping Center, and finally with the proposal terminating at the Port Authority bus garage. Only suggesting that you ask for some traffic engineers to provide you with a proposal. Not that you spend any money at this point, but to simply look for some proposals that you might be receptive to. To do traffic studies? Not so, to do, to do a, uh, to do a look to how to improve the port. This is not an idea that I request for having counts. Improve traffic flow? Flow, to improve traffic flow, to improve the, um, the, the, uh, the look and the feel of the area. If you look at Bower Hill, I'll give you an example. If you look at Bower Hill Road near St. Clair Hospital, the traffic, I believe, flows better. The intersections are far less dangerous than the most dangerous intersection in our community, which is McLaughlin Run and Bower Hill. The sight lines are better, and the livability is better. The ability to walk is better. I don't know about anybody else, but walking on Bowery Hill Road from the borough line to McLaughlin Run in front of Union Autos and that area, well, that's not particularly walkable. And we're a walkable community. And, but if you look at, I mean, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you at all, it, it, even if you go past Bridge Hill down by where Bob Rosemary is, that's not walkable. No, it's not. I mean, all the way up to Bender. That's not what. Actually, that's why I'm yeah. suggesting that this request for proposal would be a proposal to look at that roadway, the Bower Hill Road, from Painter's Run Road. That's where it gets back. If you go beyond Painter's Run, Bower Hill Road becomes very walkable, very nice. Where's the property line from the Bridge Hill Upper St. Clair on Bower Hill? Uh, the property line. Right. As soon as you go over the hill, right, right past the, the bottom of the hill, where the guardrail stops, right after that. Okay. All right. Bob, Bob, Bob Rosemary. Okay. Bob Rosemary is in Upper Saint Clair. In Caliber is in Upper Saint Clair. And Painters Run Road. So this is a request for a proposal that goes a little bit beyond the confines of the borough. Right. And, and on the other side is the bridge. Great. Is is there any thought of? I mean, is there any going to do with the former? But uh, I know there's a think piece of property that's for sale across from Edwards. This is looking to develop now. Anybody's talked about what might be more there or what it's zoned for, what they want. Is it, is, it, is it something they want commercial or is it housing, apartments? Because that'd be a big, you know, based on what a developer wants to put in there, 
It's a significant piece of property. Yeah, yes, it is. And it's also a, home, home, a very difficult piece of property. Right. That property spans Upper St. Clair and Scott Township. Right. Um, it's an, I'm, I'm, not, I'm familiar enough with it to know that it's very difficult to, to work with. I would not, I would certainly, as, as part of looking at, at any kind of movement of, of roadbeds and roadways, you know, be cognizant, but I think that that's much more a question for our St. Clair. I'm not aware of any development that is planned for that site at this point. Um, I would submit that improvements to the traffic would could not, I don't think that that would harm any kind of future right. development that Upper St. Clair would want. Oh, no, I would be a magic the contract. Oh, it would be, it would enhance it. Yeah, basically. Yes. But not only like that, whoever develops, develops it could be meaningful to building the infrastructure. But right? again, people in the They might, but again, before we can even ask them to do that, we have to have right. an idea okay. that's beyond, right. you know, and and you're talking about Upper St. Clair in the area of the Painters Run of the Borough Line. You follow that same pathway to the bridge of the north end of Washington Avenue. It, the, the tail of the project, or the proposal on Washington Avenue, will reach into Collier Township up to the Port Authority bus route. Again, the two tails of the project bringing it in region. You know. I, I, you know, I think it's a good idea, especially with. Perhaps what we're going to hear tonight, so yeah. that we can always keep it in the back of our heads that you know this could be a potential if, integration. If, if perhaps the planning commission could ask for such proposals, then at least if you have a proposal that you can look at and they perhaps recommend to council. You know, if if you would ask for a proposal, you know, for the next meeting, you might get one or two. Right. So, thank you. And uh, I really am waiting for this solution. So thank you. All right, thank you, Scott. All right. Uh, adoption of minutes. Any, any questions, um, corrections, comments in regards to the minutes? Okay. I think the minutes look good. Okay, so I need a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, and motion passes. All right, so now we get into the nitty gritty of this and the new business. All right, the block and run flood control project. And with us, we have John Hill and Kevin Brett. And John, I think you're the one that's going to be speaking. Is that correct? That's right. All right, and um, oh, by the way, thank you for numbering the, the pages. <laughs> Okay. Um, and after, so the first part of it is going to be you're going to give us an update as to what's transpired recently, what we've done to improve the situation, and then secondly, we're going to go through your proposal for the process, right? Yes. Okay. Imagine also the stuff that was been covering from the so we understand the whole process. Okay. But there's a lot of problems. Okay. So, um, as you know, we have worked with the borough on a number of projects throughout the, uh, the watershed area that have impacts to the current flooding ones. It starts off with where on, on the back channel of Charter Street, where all this water goes to the inlet. If it doesn't flow, nothing's going to flow upstream. The um, models all show charge, the back part of Charter Street backs up a lot of the So, that all being said, we want to start with us to make sure that Charter Street is flooding as well. Can I just ask one question before you go any further? If we have questions, would you prefer to finish? Yeah, you can do the Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, so that all being said, one of the first projects that the borough looked at was at the at our painters run discharges in the back channel tractor street. We did a dredging project to remove a very, very large sediment bar that has accumulated, accumulated a great flock of flows significantly. So that was done, borough staff had to work with it, it was great. Then we did one also right at the mouth of the bottom run. There was another one, very large sand bar that was stripped in the flow of the bottom run to a triple wood in the one on edge for a normal storm. It's obviously when the strain came up, it would go to the sand bar, but it was obviously stripped from the flow. So those two projects are done, and 
cleaned up and we're just waiting for file stabilization and then those projects are completed. We also last year did um, Maple Street, Maple Street uh, wall repair, which was basically it was a section in the mill that was gaming baskets, end of life, starting to sag, um, then quite bright enough uh, elevation. So we replaced that section of the wall and put a cap across the entire length of that wall in that area. That is not a solution, it, it's, a, it's a first step in the whole process. It keeps it level with the ground on the other side. But bring it up higher, then you can cause flooding on the adjacent property, which the people will not let you do. So it brought us to a point where both sides of the stream are the same elevation. So when the water comes up, this guy's not going to flood with this guy, and vice versa. So that's where that sits. In the fall, they finished up the Block and Run Park uh, flood control project. The intent of that project is not to prevent flooding. The intent of that project is to capture all the large debris that's coming downstream, the cars, the dumpsters, the very large trees that are getting um, they're coming out of the upstream municipalities. Uh, the idea is that they, they'll be captured at, by the trash rack as installed. The ball floor was lowered, one to provide all half for storage. To give the water somewhere to go when that starts backing up so that we don't cause flooding on the stream. Cause flooding in the process of yards. So, TA Robinson said we cannot increase the flooding of TA Robinson. We cannot increase the flooding of St. Clair. So, we have to make sure that not only do we capture that debris, but we wouldn't cause flooding. So, that project is functioning um, the, way that, the way it's set up. It is set up. Of the DP relations to let water through. It's not intended to catch the small debris. It's intended to catch the very big things. The things that get wedged underneath the bridges, get wedged underneath the bridges, that would have significant flow. So I think there's a lot of, what is that Japanese knock on you? Yes. Right or all along the yes. water right yes. there. And one of the things that I noticed, both in the two times that we flooded, had high water. Water, that it, there's a ton of that not be in the trash rack, and it was also down here at the corner of mm -hmm. Baldwin Street. I mean, I know it's difficult to get rid of. It's an invasive species. It's an invasive species, and it's next to impossible. It's like really something you don't want on your tree banks. No. no. Right, right. Unfortunately, the only way to get rid of it, part of what we do, is you actually have to cut it down to the ground mm -hmm. and spray it. And it'll suck when it's trying to recover. It'll suck the poison. If you just raise it up as it's tall, it doesn't mean anything. You have to put individual droplets in each individual spot in order to kill it. We did a project up uh, north. It's called Murphy's Bottom. Um, Duquesne University. I owned the property and they had a pilot project. It had not me all over it, but they actually had to kind of stalk stick up about a foot and then they drop. Um, uh, very little attempt to only is it something that should be good? Is it something that should be eradicated? Yes. Yeah. And we get rid of all the non Did we not yeah. try that before we did lower the park? Did we not do we just cut it down? Right. Okay. Alright. And that's what we mostly see. This community try to maintain it. Right. By keeping it cut down. It's very difficult to keep up. And it will grow through asphalt. We got pictures. All right, so, okay. so those are the projects that are completed. Right now, we have a project ongoing. Um, she be done sometime, hopefully, sometime this week. Um, Janeway, um, the wall was there, was constructed to prevent water from back in the Janeway as much as possible. The problem was, there's no access to the Fire and bridge for the center here is where the last time was fired up. Which, two weeks ago, it was two months ago. So, what we're doing is, and this, this was started before we involved with it, we took it and got the permit finalized, got out of construction. We're doing a ramp down the creek. Part of that ramp is called a uh, um, sort of flood line system. It's a plastic log system that other birds can easily move down to eight. System would be run out the wide gate, it's watertight, and it's very simple. The back of it is fit up with a plastic case, 
and then you can that and pull it to the top. Pull the debris out and um, get it out of the street area as quickly as possible. But having to try to have it around the wall, on top of the wall, tear the wall out of the back. So it gives us a maintenance facility in that area, at least short term. So that's the project as we sit right now. Um, obviously, when we, when we got hired, the Corps just finished their front study. We got a whole copy of it. And as well as that, we started doing some analysis um, separately from that, without having a lot of sessions from the bottom line of the market. So I started getting a quick idea of what the stream is function. So I'm going to start off with the work there is. Okay, so this is a map of our the red lines, and that's all this is not right to say for us to see, but the red lines is the flood, flood plane per FEMA that uh, flood study, but it shows what's in the flood study, which shows what's in the flood plane. This is based off of a, at the time we used to call it the 100 year storm, it's now called the 1% storm event. That is the typical storm event for flood study analysis and for team to identify what properties need functions, etc. Can you show us where we're at? Sure. Uh, so we give everybody a uh, more perfect. So we are sitting right here. This is where we're right here. Okay. This is the back channel of Truck Fish Creek right here. And the bottom one part is the breakdown. Where's the breakdown? The skating yeah. rink? Yeah. Breakdown. I'm oh, sorry. Breakdown. <laughs> Uh, so, just give you a perspective of what's been going on. Um, because once one in, let's say, oh, we got this, we got that. Uh, a standard uh, 100 year storm event is uh, four to five inches of rain in a work for 24 hour period. What occurred two weeks ago is really interesting, and it actually shows what the flood problem is here very well. It's pretty good to I'm sorry, was that? Was that four, four inches of four or five inches over a uh, food park here? Depending on where you're at, you kind of get kind of it. The barrier is going to be five inches. Um, to go up to more dairy, it's six inches of problems. That moving for us is four or five inches. Um, but what happened two weeks ago? There's a little bit, maybe half inch, not a whole lot of rain. It stopped raining for the most part. And all of a sudden, the wall water. What happened was, got the park up to clear, about three inches of rain in less than an hour period of time. So, when you extrapolate that, kind of equates like a 200 year storm. It really isn't a 200 year storm event, as we know, not a 200 year storm event, just a pure volume isn't there necessarily, but the rain comes so fast, so quickly, that it just instantly runs off. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a blue community or if you're a, a, a community of small apartment lots. When that rain comes that fast, it's running off, it's going to create flooding. Um, I'll use Fox Chapel as the best example of that. Fox Chapel in the past few years has had a lot of significant flooding, it's all around. During the winter community, there is a lot of rain in Fox Chapel. They still flood. It's too tight. Trees are great for the water. Trees are good. But when it comes that fast, trees take time to capture water. So they have to suck, they have to have uh, time to the ground to absorb that water so they can grab it and pick it up. If the ground doesn't have time to absorb water, i.e. it means rain for a period of time, it's going to run off. So understanding that and understanding that a lot of storms we get it now, everyone gets upset uh, another hundred storm moments. Not actually 100 years strong, it's a 
I rate a short period of time. That's what we're getting now, and that's kind of and when we use terms of time change and all sort of stuff. It is a form of climate change, but the storm events have changed how they're hitting us right now. So change again, so it's going to change 30 times in the next few, the next uh, 20 years probably. But that's what we that's what we do with right now. And it, it, it rolls right into the flood study. And basically these storm events are creating what the flood study sh sh showed for a lot of people storm events. So they kind of equate, but it's a different end. So everybody understands when you, when you talk about like, the flood studies and how your storm event. What we have had recently is not a 100 year storm event, but it's a equivalent event. So what everybody remembers is the hurricanes. You get these long duration rains, and after Hurricane Agnes, FEMA got very active. And they created all these matters so over the last. Uh, 50 years, 60 years. So these red lines, for people in the community, they're going to say in the last 10 years, people in that red line have seen water. They flooded. And but it wasn't from a hurricane. It wasn't from Hurricane Ida. I'm sure everybody flooded in Hurricane Ida. The difference between then and today, as John indicated, we get these very compressed storms that are um, very isolated. They're in a single watershed, like the storm being described um, in Fox Chapel was real similar to the storm event that you had here, that it was an upstream event. The two communities seen the rain. But the other two watersheds in that same community, they seen the most no rain. They didn't get hardly anything. The difference there was in, in where the rate comes into this at such a high, uh, high uh, point is um, that was an entirely wooded watershed. So you got two roads in. The houses are on 10 acre lots of big, massive estate lots, almost all wooded. They have, they have a football field real similar to yours. They had five foot of water coming across it. It was 150 yards wide. Downstream, O'Hara is just like Bridgeville downstream. Very constrained. Um, a lot of walls, a lot of things happened over the years. People filled in, people put walls, temporary stuff. All that stuff got ripped out. Houses had six foot of water in them. Businesses had six foot. Uh, people were stopping their cars the whole nine yards. It was the intensity of the rain. It wasn't that it rained for a day and a half. It was that it rained for four hours, and that rain was a massive amount of rain, five and a half inches of rain. Well, it becomes then, it's not a, it's not necessarily a, a storm water issue, like you look at retention, you look at ponds. Uh, for for Bridgeville, Bridge, when John's going to get to this, this is strictly a conveyance issue. We need to get water through time. This is not a, we're going to build a pond upstream. It's not that uh, necessarily in the next 10 years, Upper St. Clair is going to change all the regulations and they're going to build 100 ponds. And they're going to, the rain event like the other day is going to be felt back. That can be part of a long term solution. You definitely are going to want to have that discussion. But to fix the problem here and take those red lines, and shrink them as close as you can to the stream and eliminate as many parcels as possible from getting impacted um, is going to be the solutions that we will teach on those a little bit. In the end of the day, it's really going to talk about as a conveyance solution. How are we going to get the water from the top of town to the bottom of town? And if you look at history in the area, that's what everybody's done. That's what Johnstown did. Johnstown built walls from one end of town to the other, they've only flooded twice in the last 50 years since then. So, so on McLaughlin, from McLaughlin Park down to the Baldwin Street Bridge, during 2018, McLaughlin Run Road got flooded almost to the right. complete other side. Yep. So, as the map shows. And what you're saying though is, is that if we improve the conveyance of the water, that and what caused that part of Bridgeville to flood? Is it the conveyance of the water? The amount of water that came down from upstream plus the amount of water that was here, plus you had multiple structures that flood. Uh, and the first two things that John talked about, the sandbars down to the of town, need to be maintained. Um, like we just fixed those. We borrowed them. If you let those go for three years and never look at them, and don't continue to maintain them, yeah. 
that then it's going to it's going to help create a problem in the future. And we have a DEP permit to do that. You can keep cleaning those up. Yes. And we also have a park. We've got a new park to do right underneath Morton Street. Oh, so you can do that. Uh, so, so you understand, there's about Crofton, uh, 173, uh, we call them occupied structures in Bridgeville Borough that are within this red envelope. There's some shed and stuff. We count them. We count them the occupied structure. The 173 that, by FEMA's analysis, we see flood. And based off of all the, all the things we've all observed, it pretty much matches up. You indicated the bottom runs road is flood. Flood study shows that it shows the houses on the high side of the bottom of the road get impacted during a hundred years contact as it sits today. Uh, now you may find too, because they've updated the maps over the years with information from communities, you may find there's houses that you know flooded that aren't on that map, and you may see houses that um, you don't think it's ever flooded, and they'll be in that map. We have municipalities that they're building to show up as being in the FEMA flood map, and we know for a fact there's no record that that municipal building ever flooded. So it's not perfect because they use the mapping from USGS, John. Originally they used USGS, yes. And now they use GIS, but over the years they've tweaked it, but it's not. It's not an exact science. The model is not exact. It comes from Army Corps because it's only as good as the mapping because they do this for the whole country. So this isn't like pinpoint mapping, but it's very representative from what we can tell what happens. Okay. So as I indicated, 2019, the Army Corps issued a uh, uh, general study that they went on. This was not for just the bottom line, but it was also for Communities over Oakdale area as well as they have been flushed as well. Uh, but that study started with the, the, the FEMA's initial flood study that performed back in the 70s. They broke and they used my information, updated the section, updated the model, uh, still based on the same, same hydraulic process, so it's the same base flow. I mean, you're sure that. Choose the model. It's just it's a, it's an updated model using the HECRAS program, and um, it, uh, it provided a number of analyses. Um, you can see there's two the two areas of the two study areas they did. The smaller one is a portion of the Rock and Rock Group Group They stopped the study just beyond uh, the just line, basically right at the um, Properties I looked at to do a potential facility that we could offer options to discuss. That's where the models come So that's, that's the extent of their study. Um, they came up with a few options and looked at a few things. First thing, obviously, was structure violence. In their, in their um, analysis, they said, oh, find these 16 structures. They'll solve the flooding for those structures. Okay, sure, that's good. That's an option. Um, you're generally reaching out. Um, now, they said, okay, we'll flip the model and dredge the channel, we'll take, take the channel out a foot, two foot. Um, it says it'll, it'll, it'll resolve uh, 24 structures. Those 24 structures are really the outermost ones on the outside edges that don't get flooded all the time. They get flooded once every 20 years or so. But it will, it will solve 24 structures. The problem with that is you're controlled by the back channel from Trucker Street. You'd have, to, you'd have to drive some charge of three all the way to the back end, then all the way to the bottom run, and you're still limited by the elevation of charge of three and how far you can go down. So the dredging does not get you the volume you need. It can have it, it shows it helps, but it, it does not get it there. The other thing they note in all their analysis is say no, is that permit, and they, they look at dredging on all their studies, but they indicate right in there. Um, you know, they don't believe you're going to be able to get a permit to do that because the uh, Army Corps and Order DEP issues that permit. They can clean the channel. They have a permit to get that channel. They can get, get it clean, but it doesn't go up this far. You're outside. Tonight. So they did the same thing in each, each analysis, Oakdale, all of them. It says that that's an option, but it's not an option 
it's likely because to get a permit for that entire length to disturb all those environmental resources is very unlikely. They're going to say, go ahead and take three foot out of this entire stream. Um, it's just not something that they do readily. They will want a study channel that's uh, like through Scott Township in that area through Collier because that's a constructed channel. They're just reestablishing where it was supposed to be. Coming through communities uh, such as this, they'll give you small areas, but even removing the gravel bar, they'll only let you take it down to the limits of where it was originally. They won't let you come up through and dredge the hole. Six inches above water. And that's hard to get through. It's it's not an understandable point for communities because you a lot of communities can remember walking under bridges, and now you can, but you can't get a permit to take the whole area out. You can clean your culvert like you did here, but you can't go 500 feet downstream and keep doing. It. They don't they don't let you. Kev, where the clean your call. So when the call was put in, that's like just the base level, right? Yeah, they said uh, when that call was put in, it probably was six inches to a foot um, of, that the water ran through from where the surface was. It wasn't like you seen like we uh, did our first walk through that day. I mean, there was four or five foot on one side. It obviously wasn't that way. But it was that way up and down the stream. Now, so far, since it's been cleaned out, it's staying. Uh, pretty well cleaned out. So and that seems like it's working. The velocities are keeping up there. Yeah, it was down at that level, not nearly what it was. Yeah. Another item that we discussed in any of the studies was we were stuck with the sanitary intercept that comes right down the stream. We have pillboxes sticking in the creek area which are obstructions which are the water line. There are two manholes in the culvert out of the first stream. So, and they stick out, they don't, they don't flush with the screw bar. So. In long term, that will go away. Again, that's that's a hard pill typically to swallow. That we know that there's a project going to happen on the sanitary sewer, and it will get moved. It will not leave that sanitary sewer. It will get moved. It's going to be bigger than the end of the day. One of those today. But for right now, which is probably a ten year uh, out project, um, but it's going to be in our lifetimes that you're going to see that sewer move because. It's part of the current planning discussion. That's one of the items that sort of gets discussed every month. It's on the Alpacine list. Uh, there's a big group that talks about it. Um, and right now, we're not asking for big parts of funding from the communities. I, th I think they want to try to make that happen. It's not a big commitment from uh, the current communities. But that will be a process to get moved. It needs moving. I mean, it's, a, it's an absolute obstruction. So the next option they looked at was the intention based and charge park of all this. Basically what they proposed, what we did, with the exception that they left an amendment and tried to contain it. Um, however, what they model is three times the size of all this, so they would leave the little side and it's about by nine feet of school before. There, the model showed about 20 structures would be safe, would be pretty uh, pulled out of the foot again. Further structures, not the right on the stream, would be off. And they also looked at Bonner Road and the North Street Bridges. In their model, they said Bonner Road didn't, didn't, by itself doesn't solve any problems. Prac uh, model Practically, we know we get rid of that center fall. Uh, we won't get the obstructions attaching there, which is causing the backups. Those backups will affect all the way to same with Commercial Street, the, the model shows four structures would be, uh, would be uh, helped by this. Uh, interesting when I start running the models, Commercial Street doesn't have as much impact if you saw the stuff downstream. But the white model stands, actual stands again, moving the uh, double, double colors, making a single color, moves a set of structure, prevents the chance of. Uh, instructions. Right now, there's not a lot of instructions in that one, but they always have heard Fire Hill, which is the first thing that catches. However, if we fix Fire Hill and commercial left as it is, it's going to be the next day, it'll be the one that starts to catch. Just nature and outside of it. So, Fire Hill comes up quite often in meetings. 
and Joe and I talked about it last week, and absolutely found um, that that bridge gets replaced and gets replaced without that column in the middle. Because that's, that's one of the steps along the way. And we want someone, you know, he wants to know states about it. that happens. So, um, and then if that happens, Commercial Street has a useful life anyway. At some point in the next 20 years, it's going to be replaced. So that's something we could program over time because it's a structure that eventually has to be changed out. It, it's not a similar structure as what you have at um, Park Hill, where you know that that structure's been there since early 1900s. I think it's the 20s. Yeah, 1920. So that's a 100 year old bridge. First Street obviously isn't. It's probably people remember that being built this year. So. It's 48 years old. It's not 15 years old. So, 50 years they start running. For a commercial street, if they change it, it's going to go another 100 years. We want to make sure it doesn't have that problem. So, the top of sand, we do, I mean, it takes care of the mountains or whatever. Yep. So, I mean, does that affect the, the commercial street bridge span or whatever? No, because it'll go, they'll just move it into the roadway. And go okay. So, what we did. And we got brought on a little bit this was we looked at the article for a while, our review code, and I didn't actually model, and I didn't do the model, and started, so I just kind of just put it. Kevin and I walked the community with a number of council members, discussed a few of the areas, um, discussed the stuff that's part of the history, stuff that I don't know if I'm in this area, um, and everything to do with it was all the commission was same page, and things that we were So now I got in, and I got in the model, and started looking at options. Um, identifying critical uh, restriction points and the of things we want to look at. So we want to look at other things. We want to look at structural level, like all systems that get, um, keep, keep the water within the street chain. Um, bridge removal replacements, what's, what's the best scenario? Um, we, um, we, we went out of the we went out of the we look, I looked at I a couple of flood control tunnels. So you go and topple from I bought the run to Churchill Street. Um, we threw the I, after I pulled the the top up for me, after I pulled money on my maps, I said, yeah, that's not a good idea. Um, we tried to put the towers in the mines and other problem we have with that is because of the elevation of action on Churchill Street, the town will be full of water and we'll be able to put it So if we had free flowing downstream, it worked. We don't have the um, efficiency that you for the cost. And then the last one was we looked at some other options for pension business. Um, last time we met with you guys, it was something we discussed, and we had a little had a, had a scenario of a facility out upstream of, of, of upstream of three four one. So, um, so Mentioned the restriction points. The primary restriction points, obviously, Charter Street's back channels are the key. I mentioned it a number of times. We talked about Commercial Street, it's a, it's a restriction point, so is Bar Road because of the set of columns. The pictures. There are two center columns. Um, one on the hill is really starting to look at that one. It's the kind of room that has to get to the sooner than later. Baldwin um, Street, it's another significant restriction. It's a single open. But it's a very small single symbol. Um, the model shows the elevation of the creek upstream of it and downstream drops about three feet through this bridge. So it's it's restricting water so bad it's creating hydraulic jump through it. Water backs up three feet above the bridge on the side and then drops down and gets through it. So obviously it's a large fast, it backs up, it goes into the roads, and it floods in the adjacent roadways. So if we can get that opened up. That lowers the water, that lowers the water up that portion of the block and run, because houses between the block and run and Maple Street. Um, and then the topographic limitations. What do we have to work with? Um, we have our nice, what was before it was developed, a nice floodplain with steep vertical slopes. That's Western Peter. We get steep vertical slopes and we have a floodplain, and we developed all the floodplains. That's what we want to do with. Um, that's what we work with. So those are the those are the restrictions I looked at when we do the So 
So for detection, some of the stuff we gotta think about. Detection things. Okay, why do we need an adequate area um, to do it? In the borough, there's not an adequate area to do a detention facility of the size that you need to have any significant impact on the um, on the street. Like I said, the core used the area from the park, the air the volume that they used, two and a half, three times the size of all filled area. They had um, they had nine 9.4 acre feet of storage, which is about, it's about six acres of property. You don't have that. So you can dig in the hillside, take the most of the hill, and the hill. Um, the entire park would be lost. Yeah, they likely took the whole park and made the whole park go away, plus the hillside. Obviously, that goes well beyond what the borough would consider. Um, losing the hills was a big step. To lose everything up there um, is, is probably out of the question. The amount you put into that park. And the way we have now, part of the field is not necessarily lost, it's a general activity field, it's something that we can buy it up there. It doesn't take many to do that, but it can be used as a general activity It looked really nice. It was nice and rich and flat. It looked great. And then it's like, it's as much as risk. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the flood control tiles and the reasons why we didn't, um, we didn't proceed with that any further. It's, it wasn't practical because of mines and the nature. Um, obviously, we, we discussed the final road, set the center call for restriction. Um, it's more of a practical impact than a volume impact. We know stuff comes down, it gets wedged in, it gets set up. All the street, I discussed the issue with it, the bridge that was. Low, it gets raised, the opening also needs to be wide. And then Commercial Street, um, one of the biggest problems with Commercial Street when we first started was the sediment deposition. Um, all the works did a great job getting that a lot of that sediment. Now it's actually functioning a lot better. Um, until all the bottom of the bridge gets corrected, I don't think you see too many more issues with that one. Once that bridge is corrected, now it's going to be one Catching, catching things. Um, you do want to pay attention to commercial street owners, both culverts. So, I mean, after rain events, they definitely need inspected in my borough public works and keep them clean so that we don't have an issue that um, you get a back to back rain event and you got one tube that's full. Now, now we have a problem if you have 50 percent capacity or 60 percent, and that just backs everything up and then problems upstream. One of the important thing, one is the practice says first and law says important and I think that I'm sharing with commercial street and why you don't necessarily see it causing any impact much of impact on because you have a cloud hole bridge, you have a trestle, and then right after trestle the commercial street bridge very easy. So the, so in hydraulic terms it's called hydraulic jump, um, gets through um, the power bridge, velocity of water speeds up, so it drops the metal, shoots through the Shotgun, it, it's through all three bridges, then it slows down again and then it backs up. And that's when we start flooding the borough building it and pulling out the skating. So, we came up with uh, actually five options. We can call it four options because option one and option one A, which is a slight difference, but we'll get into that here. Uh, the lots of options, the first three options, or the fourth, um, we broke down into three phases. Now, these can be broken down into more phases as one of these can move out thing, but we looked at it in three phases for costing as well as um, impact to see what it would do. Um, and what started this whole thing is, for me, when I got the model, is the first thing I did was I ran the model to put a lemon wall from the skating range up to the commercial street. First thing I looked at before we decided to do the actual flood study of the project, I started looking at first. And by putting a soldier behind the one wall in basically the top, top of the slope, straight down, cleaning that area out where the cold slope, we actually gained water in the stream as well as um, you know, the lemon wall that prevents the water from where the property, getting in the deep end of the property. And it, um, so it's solid flooding. But what it also did is it dropped water on the street. 
So as soon as you start looking at this, okay, that is important. So phase one of, of, of option one is, is a levy wall from skating rink to commercial street. It includes installation of backflow um, letters on the existing storm source so that the stream doesn't back up on the bubble up. That's, a, that's something we heard at the, uh, two weeks ago. It bubbled up to the inlets and then it started flooding the road. Commercial street. On, um, no, no, on Dolch. Darby Way. Darby Way. Oh, okay. Darby Way experienced the flood before anybody else did. It came off the, the inlets. It's, it's just that much lower than the rest of the road, so it started flooding first. Um, but now, okay, so we'll put a backflow with that. Well, on the old rain, it falls in that area, so I know where to go. The backflow preventers keep the stream from coming up. The streams prevent the storm from going out, so the stream drops back down. So part of that is going to be um, a, uh, I'm going to put some screw pumps at the outfall system. Outfall system. Two screw pumps up in the map, because you can see this um, in a second. Um, and then phase two was from Mountain Road to Rolling Street, and phase three was from Main Street to the entrance. So, so option one, or phase one rather, as we just discussed, uh, there's two there's two screw pumps, one down the uh, skating rink, and one just upstream of the I apologize I can't have the name of the industrial building. Um, that's next to the adjacent to the uh, skating rink. Industrial area. Just upstream of that is where the um, outfall is, so that's where you put the screw pump in. We run some small sources to get to the screw pumps. Where well, her is, when the floods come up, the screw pumps kick on, pick up the water, throw it over the top of the wall, instead of trying to push it through the creek. So it goes down the creek, water's in that, in that corridor, and for all intents and purposes, that, that, that portion of the community stays dry. What does that do to cut to uh, towns further away from us? Where this all this water has to go somewhere, right? Downstream. Downstream. Yeah, the, the flood uh, channel takes into account that this water gets through the borough as far as the amount of water that gets here. Right now, what happens to it is it goes over land, it still gets there, but it, it's wide when we're through. We're going to create the volume with height uh, on the channel, and then these screw pumps, because you've got these lower areas, um, you're just lifting your existing storm system up over that wall. So the walls, like Joe's computer, that's your stream channel that's higher now. It used to be like that bulk down below, so we're going to raise it up. Water's going to be in the middle running through here, and then these pumps just lift it up over, and uh, they've been around for hundreds of years. It's original technology, but they move a lot of water away. Anybody has a flood uh, control project, they use screw pumps because they move the large volume of water and they're simple to maintain and operate. And John will show you some pictures. Basically, it's right here. Like downstream. It's not going to be flooded. In fact, in fact this, this corridor does not, this part of the corridor does not change the flood, the flood elevation significantly. We're gaining the reduction of flooding, not necessarily by the wall, but by the removal of the slope. We're gaining volume in there. So that the elevation really stays, and it drops, I think it's like 10 to 2 tenths in some areas. That's it. The wall goes up above that because in order to meet FEMA's criteria to, if the borough would like to remove those two those out of flood studies and they don't have to pay flood insurance anymore, the wall has to be a certain height of the So, 100 year storm elevation is at 1180, the, the top of the wall has to be 1183 to qualify. So, if you want to do this, we want to recommend that you go to that elevation that way. Anyone that's behind that has okay. the ability to get the deduct on insurance to not pay flood insurance. Indeed, we would have us look at that. You file for a permit, we have to show what the flow was before now. And if there's an issue, we have to attend to the function. So, I mean, they, they're, just, they're not going to issue this permit without them and the Army Corps without all that. And not that we're doing this proposal, it's, it's just conveying. 
or not. That's just, is that an earth wall? It's a soldiering lab. It's, it's, it's steel columns with concrete in between. If you have a lot of uh, area, um, we've done them where we do earthen. It, it, it takes a lot of room. This is an area where you don't have 50 foot to make a, a large burn that has You'll see it down in the cell. At phase three, we do have a section of uh, it's shown when we get in the a lot of things to do. So, so you understand this first, this, um, this phase one of auction one, is $3.9 million. dollars went up in price. Yes, it did. And that's because had uh, two prices like <laughs> I touched the price I should have bought it. You can thank me for that, by the way. I looked at Joe's cross and I said, I don't know, I just put a bunch of stuff, we better, we better make sure we're here. Yeah, we got to keep, we compare it to the numbers of our current bedding and everything. Okay, so here's that phase. As I indicated, okay. uh, anyway, so the wall starts right here, all the way here. All that green area, that's additional volume in the stream we can have today. So we're going to gain. Floodplain, basically, um, so that in that volume that's restored from the blood water, the main set, main industry, the main industry. So the wall is on the left side of that, yes. where the green is. So we have a screw pump right here, a screw pump right here, will be a uh, high flex, up fill, attach the pipe, that's water out, put that water in. Um, they're very efficient. Small cross grain will actually get through the stream and come back up through. So that is phase one. Now, you can blow up, see that are the uh, rewind the storm system. So we're going to catch the storm source coming out here and up to the screw pump, get it to the sharp through, pump it over, and pump the star You can see. Then you can see the green areas can be now storage water, we don't have it. Okay, that's what a screw pump looks like. Very simple design, but it's much correct. Our ancestors really didn't do do with the screw pumps, they do a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. You have to put emergency power on. You got emergency generators, present floods, a lot of times power goes out in areas, so you, each one will have an emergency generator with them. Um, but they're pretty simple. It has a motor, has a big auger basically that lifts the water out, and you, your catch basins are at the bottom left, and then it dumps it out at a higher elevation into the, into the channel. Um, so it's, it's pretty simplistic uh, design. So for for maintenance of generator equipment here, um, what is the annual? Cost for 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 me containing generators. You have to have a contractor. Contractor generators today. Um, it used to be this way, but today um, they're pretty simplistic. You can get a maintenance plan. Um, like anybody has a lift station, pump station, things like that. Communities they used to have to have operators to take care of all that stuff. But now uh, any of the generator companies will come out with monthly maintenance on it. Public Works is trained to month make sure. And every day it starts off, you're supposed to run for so many minutes just to make sure everything's working on it. Um, it'll have a SCADA system on it. We'll report back to Joe. We'll be able to open it up and look at it and make sure everything's working. Because today things are they're computerized as far as monitoring goes. The screw pumps yourself, that motor at the top, um, it'll have maintenance like any motor, electric motor that you have. Um, the screw pump itself, um, it's just a big altar. It's just an industrial piece of equipment. You'll work on it with Coriopolis. Um, their first meeting since 72. We have a couple of contracts now we're putting together. They've done very little to it for years now. I can tell you they should have been. They kind of left, left it go um, mm -hmm. because it wasn't needed uh, often. But now it's needed more. So they've been doing more maintenance. So, but I mean, annual maintenance, we're talking about a couple thousand. Generally, a few thousand. Because um, it's an oil change uh, once a year, and then it's just making sure it runs. Uh, I'd say 2500 bucks something like that. Per um, generator? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, the screw pump itself, we would have a maintenance plan that you would set up, put money into an account every year, um, whatever it is, three, five thousand dollars, something like that. It'll build up in, in 20 years when you got to change out a motor. The money's sitting there. Um, a lot of people try to do that in reverse when it breaks. You find the money. I'd rather see the communities with stuff like this. You set up and you put a little bit in each year. When it comes time to replace it, you want to cash it. Do a dedicated account. So. Okay. Phase two, and from Bottom Road to Ball Street, we're going to continue that block process. We're so tight, we're going to uh, go to our lane walls on uh, both sides of the street there. Um, we're going to pinch. We're going to eliminate the sidewalk from our way. We're going to, we're going to promote a, pedestrian, a different pedestrian track up down Baldwin Street and reconnect. It's not going to be an option to walk down there. Um, even with the road closed, Thursday and Friday night when you're doing paving, the sidewalk is not in a good, good situation as a system. So, our recommendation we're going to get rid of, we're going to create a different pedestrian control. Um, we're going to replace the Firehill Bridge. We're going to, uh, as part of this project, we included the price to completely reconstruct the Firehill Bridge. Um, the work that's being done is, is band aid. There are bad and bad slows that keep running into that between the stream bottom and the southern rail of the road. Some bad slows in there that over time causes it to move a little bit. Um, but we're, we're going to reconstruct that property and probably do concrete for instead of asphalt. Asphalt just gets pushed by the end of the Um, as we saw you all, we're going to replace our road bridge. We're going to replace the ball machine bridge. That's going to get raised about a foot, foot and a half. It's going to get wide in two feet. Greatly improves that opening. That eliminates a lot of the high waters off stream. Now that water, instead of jumping up three feet and then about that many times, just goes straight through two days through. Um, now, and there's two screw pumps on the ball, which you can even install as part of that project. One at uh, JMA and one halfway up towards the ball street bridge. That's all sorry. Uh, this section is about a 15 million dollar cost. Um, part of my end of this is a lot of more properties that we condemned to do this. So donate house for two structure communities, and that's a big loss now. Yeah, this is bridge heavy. And the cost, so you got a lot of millions in bridges, plus you got two repaint. So, Bowery Hills, Allegheny County, Baldwin is Bridgeville. Now, uh, Bowery Hill is Bridgeville from. So, Bridgeville is Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the four properties are in green, right? Four properties. No, four yeah, Two of the properties suggest straight from the first one. Two of the properties are right here. Take it, take it, and there it is. One, one, two. I can't see that, Joe. I can't see that. I think only you can see it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so, the point two, part, the two houses that are on Bar Hill Road there, just not across and heading from the church, mm -hmm. those two would go, and then I believe it's one of the one properties along uh, the Wall Street Bridges. Uh, and then I think it's between it's one box. It's a, um, so three properties. There's, there's a total of four, I think it's a fourth, a third one in those. It shows up as a tax parcel, as a third parcel. I think it's owned by one of the other two. I think one of those properties is not in the It's not from last year. So, as we indicated, we have a couple of blocks here. We see something better. So, there's, there's a replacement of the for it. Single span, right there, Jan Way. Um, we got a screw pump there, and we got the uh, backflow cutter. So, backflow cutter is actually being installed now. So, that's going to, that's going to, that's also going to help the current flow, but it will be installed and then we can put the screw pump into actual water that's falling on the bridge. And then there's, there's the revised bottom bridge. Um, so much pavement we're going to have to install to. Adjust the grade so we can get over it. You can see the green area there where you got how much volume you're going to gain in the, uh, the border. 
Phase three, a um, little different approach here. Um, uh, flooding here is not as bad as it's in the time close uh, as it is down in the, in the urban area, more of a residential area. It's, but there's still, there's still significant area flooding. So we are proposing a blend of earthen and structural that we roll through there um, from um, Maple Street up to um, entrance of the park. Um, we're also proposing to do some additional modifications to the wall of Maple Street, raise us slightly more, um, putting a gate, just like we're doing the Janeway, on the ramp we have for access to the creek there. Because right now, even with the wall there, what happens when the street comes up, it backs up the ramp, backs up the road. Um, yeah, can't block that right now because that's our ass that of maintenance. Uh, this section is another two point five million dollars. Um, so, as you can see, you can see the green areas. Those are the storage wide area we're getting uh, just above the bridge. And I, I, I can point about it. I see it. Unfortunately, I just want the cursor to move through. No, it's my way because I can show up. Um, so it's confusing. Joe's one. Steve Joe's one. Joe's one. Fine. So that area, I think, it's not cooperating. That area there is, is the earthen farm area. So instead of doing a actual wall, we'll do an earthen farm. It does the same thing as the wall, it's just the earth, so the wall is not cheap. Why don't you show anything from Maple Street to Baldwin Street? What's the idea there? The ties of the improvements downstream, the water surface drops enough that it's not impacting the structures. Well, and you know, my cousin's house got flooded in 2018. Oh, it does now? Yeah. Because of the improvements we do downstream. Okay. It drops. Okay. Bottles, by dropping bottles, by, by opening bottles, the bridge is getting a lot of fluid, and it drops the water surface. When we get to the way out, the results. We'll see how match. Okay. Now, some people's yards may still be water, but their structures, you know, don't don't flood. I just asked if it's a uh, whole city block. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was an excellent question. It was an excellent question. It was, it was interesting to model this on that once I opened everything up. How come there? Yeah. So, this is map of something. After we put all those options in place, you can see how much smaller that red area is through the port, through the entire corridor. This is a revised FEMA flood map. This is a revised FEMA flood map based off of what the model shows after we do the improvements. Hypothetically, this could be what it reflects for those folks' flood insurance policies. Correct. If we yeah, you do a map revision. And that can be accomplished if this is done. Once all this work's done, then you go into the team with a letter of that which is what it's called. It's about a year and a half process um, to get through that, and it'll uh, and then they'll revise the map that should look like this instead of how it does today. Which had. So they're printing this. Right, right, right. Uh, because that is a three, three, three tier increase on the, on the flood marks, flood marks. marks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're still in first year. So this is still, this would just capture the 100 year floods, the older 100 year floods. Uh, 100% smart. Correct. So the, the old hypothetical 500 year flood is still something to be cognizant of. The mapping is willing to reflect the 100 year to the older flood. Yeah, that's why they make it do it three feet. 100 year is at the bottom of three feet. Somewhere between the bottom of three feet and the top of the wall is a really outlying storm events. And you get a 200, 300, 400, 500. I mean, they had a storm event in the Philadelphia area a couple weeks ago. It was a thousand year and, and the governor flew there immediately and said this will never happen again. And all the engineers in the city said that it should never happen again. And you can't say it will never happen. You can't spend enough money to make that not happen because it's, a, it's that. It's a thousand year event. It's every square of source. We have the size of Right. So and it and it is it was viable. I mean it was horrific the amount of water that came out of water that 
it, it was one of those once in a lifetime things. So did you take into because I saw that NOAA just published their forecast for the next like ten years. And you know there's a considerable increase in rainfall and potential flooding. That's what it's supposed to be very dense. It's not Okay. They don't have okay. But their forecast is what we're talking about. Three inches in an hour versus the five inches over twenty-four hour period of time. This analysis basically will handle that three inches in an hour. You get four inches in an hour, it now you're talking five hundred years. Why aren't we just doing that? Why aren't we just being prepared for twenty years on the line? These weather systems. Continually that continually shoots. We're just seeing things that we're going to have a lot of time. More and more. Why are we praying for that longer time? Why are we praying for that 10%? You can, but when we, and, and we can look at those numbers. I mean, I had a call the other night. Somebody said on a call they want to look at 500 year event. We're going to look at that, at the other six people on the council. Um, that, that, that it's going to be a guarantee, the number is going to go up so much that it becomes completely unattainable. So instead of having a project that goes by standards that today have been set, because um, in climate change and, and what the numbers are going, um, everybody has a big opinion about this. It, the easiest thing to do from an engineering perspective is look at the news every night and look at the last time the high temperature was, what it is, or the amount of rain we got, what it was, you're going to see 18 something, you know, 19 something. It's whenever they start keeping records. The amount of rain and the temperatures are typically not from 2020, 2019. It just doesn't happen. There, there is some events in there, and I agree. We've seen some crazy stuff. We've seen some uh, rain events that are abnormal for this area. But if I ask everybody how much rain this year, where are we at when we had everything behind, I told you that I thought personally we were ahead this year on rain. We're behind. We were behind an inch and a half as of last week on, on the year. That seems crazy, but we've had a lot of rain. I thought we were in Seattle recently because it rained damn near every day. But the reality of it was we're actually we were behind. And, and that's why we can look at that for you, but by today's standards and with the cushion they make us put in, um, it takes care of a lot of that. But if you say to us, we want you to do the 500 year event, we can do that. The railroads did that. Um, I don't know if you ever noticed railroad tracks before. I think it's the best way to correlate this. Right. We, we talked about that in the bridge all over those railroads. And I think if you can correlate. Yeah. The 500 year flood comes to the railroad. If you can speak to that, I think that answers this whole thing. Yeah, the railroads didn't flood because ra railroads had endless amounts of money. They, 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 set the, they set the railroad tracks 500 year above uh, for the most part. You'll have an occasion that you'll find a 250 or so. But if you look at a railroad track and then you look at a state highway system, state highway system has a beam that's about two foot thick. You look at a railroad track, they'll have a six foot high beam on it that has more metal than anything else in town. Yours probably works the same way because the railroad had endless amounts of money and they set everything at that rate because they did. Communities, the state, most of the organizations, they don't have that kind of funding to deal with um, because the, the, the calculation you get into, and, and, and we, we will eventually talk about this, but once you pick your option for the project, you then got to get into okay, what's the value of the properties you're saving? If you if you get to a project and it's a fifty million dollar project, if we take all hundred and seventy two structures and say what's the value in it, um, of, of, if you took them all, you're you're likely never getting even close to that that dollar value. Even when you add taxes in and everything, you just don't get there. We don't have any communities to take the structures. If the Army Corps, they're studying that the, most of their studies say take these structures. It's the number one thing they say because they want to eliminate the fact that people could flood. You know, they, they want to get rid of that. Where uh, communities all look at how do we protect all these structures? You got 172 structures. You can do it for a low enough number, 
that's okay. If you get to this big, gigantic number that's worth $50 million, $60 million, now you start looking at that per structure cost, it becomes unattainable. No, nobody. So that's why at the end, you guys will get some questions from us because you're going to see this. And it was a good question. Why don't we do the five times? Nobody can afford it. The other part of that is, okay, we can raise the walls and spend all that money there. We still have the problem of infrastructure in the borough for the storm sewers is inadequate. All the soft hills is inadequate. So we need to spend that money, we should spend that money to get those sewers to be able to convey the water that falls on them off the roads to safety. So there's, there's, a, there's a double edged sword we have to think about when we're doing this. Thank you. So option 1A, I'm going to make this one real quick. The only difference between option 1 and option 1A is we replace the first trooper in here. Um, so we can go through all this. The, the end result is there's a um, this is a $1 million increase in bill for the street bridge. Um, so there's the bridge, we just keep on apologizing so we can see that. Come on. Okay. Well, you're doing it. Does anybody ever recall seeing anybody walk down the hill street, down the road, on the sidewalk? Yes. I also would say there was a couple of walkers walking yesterday. Is that you? No, it wasn't me. It was a, a woman with a little boy. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I can see a lot of And they get something in track transportation study. You want to include it so they know that there's a potential you want to get rid of it. So they can include, okay, how do we do it where they need to do um, I think that's going to be the point for the moment for them. Um, because that's a cost effective option for you as eliminating a walk and gain that space. So, that's again, the big change is from 1 to 1A is there's Merle Street Bridge, NBA, concrete, pond span, arch, single span arch, and we've got that allows us to make that bend. Um, now we just replace the road wheel top. Option two stays the same, option or phase two stays the same, phase three stays the same, that option. And this is one of those that it could be a single green project. That no matter what, over time, you know you've got to change that out anyway. It doesn't matter when, when you actually do it. The permit's pretty simple to get. Uh, and it can be one of those ones you put in for a grant and just do it. You can do it in the next five years, three years. You can do it next year and say, okay, check that off. That's one thing that's not. Just because it's an added item, it's something that, practically speaking, everybody here knows that's a better situation to eliminate that center. And we add that to the start looking for money options. Uh, it's, it's an easy project to build. Okay. Option two, very similar to option one and option one A. The big difference is the section between Byerville Road and Baldwin Street. Uh, we looked at this in a different uh, situation. We made Baldwin Street a, a true pedestrian corridor. We eliminated the Baldwin Street Bridge and put a simple pedestrian, small pedestrian bridge over that area. Greatly improves the draw that situation. Opens that corridor for pedestrians from the call sack from Baldwin Street Bridge, from Port Road Baldwin Street, and it's there, and for a park. So it kind of frees that pedestrian corridor from the residential area down in the town. Um, option one stays the same. Option three states that, that, that core and center start looking at different scenarios in that situation. So, one stays the same. So, there's the 
OSAC, you can see there's a lot of show the zero for preference, and there's a very small bridge there. That bridge, uh, we go through these in the Fox Chapel, the fiberglass. Poor guys got picked up and said, die. They don't move. They used to all that flooding that Fox Chapel received recently. They got a very good level, very easy to maintain. Yeah, there are public, public works built in. Can go over the winter in their garage and just come up and set up um, because they put together it's kind of like an erector set. But oh, why does it? Um, very, that was one we went six foot. I said so there's six. You can make them eight. We went six foot, but we went to be the best year. I think we'll try that out. Well, what would your be? I don't know. Do the storm with it? Mm -hmm. So, so lower. Uh, we even have a little sidewalk mile where we're getting blue kind of like. You guys don't have this stuff. You, you're not responsible for sidewalks, so you might stay with the park. But, and it will be snow blowing in the fountains. And to be honest, unless you have a lot of snow, it starts melting and freezing, typically there's no snow on it, and it's a great system. So thank you, Foster. So, other than that, the rest of the, the, the concept stays the same. Well, of it, they freeze, that's the same. And the flood map is basically identical for all, all three of those bases. It is, it's taken, and it's in the solution, but it's eliminated all the impacts down from 173 to basically zero. It's not zero because we had to take a piece of problem with this. Um, It's a cost round. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it an option to include uh, redoing the uh, railroad? Yes. Also has to yes. Be yes. 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 Repaving. And if you notice, there, we actually we configured an intersection there at the bottom of the left. Yes. If you wanted to improve that intersection, you would have that option. Because obviously, since you're not going to go down Baldwin Street, we want to make sure that that intersection is more safe than it is today. Okay, option three, uh, still following that same, same concept. Um, phase one stays the same. Phase two is where we get a uh, lot different. Um, so, phase two, we get rid of the Bayer Hill Road Bridge. We get rid of the Bayer Hill Road. We um, reconfigure the intersection at Baldwin Street. Referred to Paramba. You have to, um, uh, when you're placing the Baldwin Street Bridge with much bigger bridge. Um, and then reconfiguring the intersection at the bottom of the bottom of the road. Instead of doing structural loading walls, since we eliminated the power of the road, um, and you see, the, see what we reconfigured to do the route of Baldwin Street, we made plus intersections that the officer can have today. Um, we're going to we're going to do a uh, earthen work. We're going to plan. We're going to actually prepare a repairing house. We're going to create a repairing house. So it's going to be the jade buffer. It's going to be more of a park atmosphere through that area. Um, and that's because you can widen the chain because we get rid of the fire. Yes. Um, this option, just for this phase, is about sixteen point nine million. Key to this is do this with condemned areas and properties. Now it creates a section of land that could be redeveloped after it's all done. Uh, it could be sold to a developer that would want to develop it, but 30 cent profits are going to be um, So this, this is not necessarily palatable, but it's something that's going to be discussed. This kind of matches up with the uh, study that was done previously by the land plan for this corridor. There's a plan for, the, for that section of the corridor. You can see all the green spaces created. Um, you see the roundabout down at Bal Baldwin Street. Uh, see how we rerouted that Baldwin Road into, into there so that you don't have that intersection um, that you have today. It's, well, you guys are going to stick your nose out to try to see it. And you get up to the uh, where the Beard Street is. The Beard Street is one of the properties that will be taken just for reference purposes. The road will go right through the Beard Street. 
It would create a plus intersection, a safe intersection between Railroad Street, um, uh, Baldwin Street, where it connects to the Hill, and then where it comes up on the hill, which I'm probably just not doing the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're losing six businesses as part of this point. More than six. More than six. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a significant impact. Um, yeah, this is a this is a big swing with a lot of impact the properties. This does kind of mimic what the planning document was that was out there. Um, traffic flow wise, you hire a traffic engineer, they're gonna brace this plan, they're gonna say it's a great plan. Because it's gonna fix the traffic. But it's, it's environmental impact as far as businesses, economic impact, it's it's massive. And this this one isn't just a dollar impact, 16.9. This eliminates a bunch of businesses. Yeah. Um, they may flood today, but they're no longer here, so they're going off the, off the chart as far as that, but then you don't have your tax revenue. Um, but you do flip. All directions, this fixes the traffic. Traffic's going to flow straight through the school. Now, like John said, you could have some redevelopment. You're not going to get much. Because it's going to be a busy corridor. You're not going to get the, the beer distributor to live here and try to, you know, put on land that, that may still flood, you know, stuff like that. So, um, so this is an option that you, you, you kind of had sketched out already. So we did model it, we did price it, it does work. Um, but here it's, as John indicated, it's, it's got the base price up. Uh, both for what you see long term and what it is now. But socially, economically, and then the actual fee. And, and to be honest, fee just create more impacts to property owners, more property owners, just pure cost, it's not that much more. Okay, it's a million more, but not, it's not like it's, 20 million to 40 million, it's maybe more than that. But the economic impact makes it, and it's not necessarily palatable. Um, it's not right now, it may be not palatable. I'll say once the traffic starts off. Maybe if, when you get the surveys done on this, you may impact five more properties because when you get to both ends where the roundabout is on the other side, we're showing what we think is going to get impacted. But once you did the survey, it may go up. You may have other businesses that you just you can't work with the grade of their buildings, they're just too low. The road's going to be up here, and the houses and the businesses are going to be down low. So. Or maybe they, you don't lose those businesses, they lose their basement. So the basement. Mm -hmm. What is my question? Uh, why are you swinging the road in earlier at the green space on the bottom side of the bottom? Mm -hmm. Is that the business issue? Oh, oh. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I thought I had another question. So you're taking the green space right now, putting it onto railroad. All of them, which is considerably the business district of Paul Street. If you swing it at the right at the apex, once you start to make the curve over towards Bower Hill, then now you can keep all that land and make this bigger space a larger green space and a larger park with the roundabout still there. And that wouldn't change your hydraulics. In fact, that wouldn't even help your hydraulics. Now you have more of a regional area to disperse the water as opposed to all this. Conveying, I'm not getting anything in those places. And most of those businesses or homes, I'm sorry, are up for redevelopment already, either through the flight program or. Again, you know, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the just the place. It's a placeholder option. Right. There's tons of fine things we can do to every one of these options to fine tune, shift the road five feet this way, shift the road five feet that way. Well, I'm talking about 100 feet. Well, you're not moving enough feet. You can't go in. You can't throw rubber streets there. <laughs> you, you got your back. I agree with you. Get up and just kind of yeah, point out right. what you're talking about. I'm going to go all the way down here. Then make the move. If you come here and you make your move now, now you're creating, you're saving this business district where we're getting a lot of tax or down here, if we make this more of a, you know, half of these homes are, and buildings are already concerns. 
you know. Um, that makes this availability to be our green space, and we can save the business district. But I mean, it's well. The only way to do that, we have to make that part of a road structure. Three or four well, times. Are we doing that? In phase no, I mean you have to make it four times longer. Now, it's not a bridge you have to open and miss those businesses and not just put the road that reconnects up where the railroad track crossing is. That, that, that's what this plan does. That's what you had current plan, that's what it showed, um, is to reconfigure that. It, you would have to put more structure for the stream because what you're saying is move the stream to miss like the district. You do that, then you got to have a bigger structure. I'm not saying the stream, I'm saying to just the bridge or yeah. add a bridge. Yeah, you would have to move the road, like you're saying, to the north, but to do that, you'd have to have the stream under the road. To, so, it should be very difficult to from there. And everything is very difficult to from there. Yeah, well, it's yeah. 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 not possible. And the bridge structure would go from $2 to $3 million to $20 to $30 million. You just put like a hundred, couple hundred yard culvert and put our right over it. Your street in the down. past, yes. Today, no. Why not? You know, you know, they will be the permit. You will not get permit to do it. They will. Okay. So, I'm like, okay. it's not just up here. It's down here. You're constraining yourself to replacing the traffic on what is now called. And that's what you're You're not constrained by that. There's nothing that prevents you from leaving a Baldwin Street and moving this road and this up here so that it's going more that way. Well, yeah, that's right. That's what I meant by the problem too. We should go right. And five and five and people say not four or five feet, but not a hundred, but maybe more like twelve. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that you've got a beautiful area that's down here. That can thrive with green space and parking and yes. just not a road, not a high traffic roadway right against somebody's front door. You're going to have a high traffic roadway. You're going to, you're going to have a high traffic roadway. No question about that. You go right down on our hill. It's going to be a high traffic roadway. The question is do you put it right here in front of these people's front door or do you put it further up? So that you've got green space and parking between, and now the now my front door comes out on the green space and parking. It is a beautiful neighborhood. It is a developable neighborhood. It is some place I want to be, not just some place that doesn't flood. Flooding is only one of the component problems. Right. Fine tuning that. That's, that's a fine tuning of the optics. No question. Right. This it doesn't change flood stuff. So I don't that's what we're We're worried about flood stuff right now. Right. That is the next step. My other question was, is the curve because of railroad, or is it just... Curve is to get your your intersection, you know, a nice, inter safe intersection. Right. Not doing a round up here, too. Right. Okay. And that's we're just going to plus And we're limited. We can't go, we can't do anything once we get to the tracks. That's, that's fine. Yeah, so we're stuck with that. We're way. stuck with that cross. Not that will improve the segments. Right, improve the segments. That's the, that's the key. It, it creates a true plus intersection instead of the one set. This is what we deal with today. And what this option does too is it, yeah. it, it gives you a natural stream channel. If you take the whole stream and you push it up tight to the rock cliff, right where Byer Hill is, right. then it gives you more ro room to put um, the road uh, going through those backyards. But that's a all the costs go up because now you're putting walls back in. Um, so this option maybe gives the 20 million, but you end up with not Baldwin Street being the road, then Bower Hills just moved. So, so like, like we said, I can do this one again, I can see it. Um, like you said, we can go straight out from here, not from one, two parts, stay in one, two parts, zero, but the idea is to get a nice plus intersection for the state. This is just ridiculous. Uh, why do we need a bridge there? Why don't we make an alternate bridge further down towards the commercial going behind the holes or something? Oh, it's commercial and that around You have to get another uh, track crossing, I think. You have to get another rail, rail crossing. I don't, I don't know that you can get a rail crossing today. If it doesn't have a street with a PUC number, 
Um, so the likelihood of that's all right to get towards, we're not shoot straight down towards the angle. Yeah, if you if you had a street that had a crossing number, um, you can reopen them and build it. If it doesn't exist, it, it's nearly impossible to always get a new crossing. But if there was, that's getting completely rid of the bridges. You know, possibility. Um, so, um, I have a question about. So, all the if we go, if we go this route with the roundabout, mm -hmm. that would take all of the trucks that normally would take the forty-five long foot trucks. It would take them out off and power in the all five PJs, take them to the roundabout. He just would be there. He just would be And then I'd take it down. Yes. Yeah. Right. New ball. New yeah. ball. Which New ball. Which would be a bigger road. It would be as narrow. Our building would be. Four would be. And your placement in those buildings on the other side of the road, you can put a 20 foot green space down there. You can put a, a service road. But the, when you do that, then you impact all the properties on the other side of the road, which is maybe okay. I mean, that, you have to lay out which side of the road you want to impact. Your hillside, the hillside of Baldwin Street would be beautiful. And I wouldn't, it's not the new Baldwin Street. It's a new road, and Baldwin Street as a nice little residential street still exists. You can only do that. I don't want anybody to leave the meeting thinking that's possible unless you say all the properties between Baldwin Street and Bower Hill go away, right. except for the commercial. If you're willing to say everybody goes away there, you can do that. The, the, the creek side of Baldwin Street has to be sacrificed. Yes. And then you can leave Baldwin Street just like it is. A, it would be a single loaded street then, instead of a double load. Exactly. So we have the traffic on its own path. What would be left on the hill side of Baldwin Street would be a beautiful area. It would just be green space. It would be a street. Green space, and then on the other side of Baldwin Street, which 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 is okay. Okay, and option three to change now. Option four. This was something that was discussed at the last meeting. The commission was very interested in this. Oh. Okay, so there's the flood map, very similar to the one for um, the other two options. Basically, all the properties are out of it, but if we didn't have a great impact, if we shift the road closer to the stream a little bit, same scenario that land on the down page side of all the street slash out of the street, we'll call it the out of the flood map. And, and what makes the what makes the ground underneath stable enough to put a road as opposed to Power Hill where we're having so many problems? And it is constructed. constructed. Okay. Before you do that, we can put a geotech on that yeah. analysis and we can make sure that it's solid if there's undercut in the time. And for instance, the Bower Hill Road, our, the, our cost is just getting up for people. Getting a lot of material out. Is this not the road I tried right here? No. That's the cement. That's the cement. Okay. I was going to say, I see an access road right there. That's all I was saying. Yeah, the railroad track is on the left side of the cement. When I get to the end of the cement plant, it's a <laughs> hundred and some foot vertical cliff. Okay. Option four. Uh, there's two parcels in Upper St. Clair up around the bend from T.A. Robinson that are owned by a private property that are along the stream that um, 
Maybe the 9.5 acre foot detention facility. Um, that would be about four feet deep. The way it would work is you could be doing a large uh, embankment, structural embankment. When the stream comes up, it dumps over into that, it contains water. It will have a small pipe at the bottom to let it drain out over time. But uh, the idea is it kind of just fills in and fills up, shaves off water. Um, Modeling that, the days a little bit about 300, 300 cubic feet per second off of the tow storm event, which is one that has 15, I think 1500. It changes to the community as we get close to the bottom of the but somewhere around 1500 CFS to start with. Um, that's what it looks like. This is on the property that Sienna Woods or her Tuscany. So no, it's getting weird. No, no, no. This is this is uh, this is a separate separate property. Owner. I know, but but is it in? Oh, it's over the hill. Uh, we'd have to you know, our access to this maintenance would be all up in the wall. Okay, because okay, because that's where originally they were planning on putting their pole on our property. They were planning on putting the pool. That's this year. We're actually next plan. We don't have this plan. We're going to next plan out here. So we're completely not saying that there's no right. no bridge wall involved in itself. The substation, if you know what a substation yeah, is, yeah. is downstream. Are you talking TA Ward? No, this is yeah, TA Ward. Yeah. Then you have a little land, you have a substation, right? And you continue on stream, then you have to use Okay. You're both welcome. And there's a proposed development that came before us, maybe. Oh, that was on the other side. That was on the other side. No, no, no. no. It is here. It's like two years ago. Right. Right? It's been a very long time. Yeah. The substation is being rented from TA Ward. Right. As yes. It. yes. And then there's another empty lot that he owns with yes. gravel and stuff. Yes. 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 This is on the other side of the road. Is this, is this the bottom of uh, Richfield? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then yes. Just saying, this is the parcel that we were thinking where Tuscany Point was going to be developed. Correct. In here, yeah. right. The rec center was going to be next to the cul de sac and bridge road. This is the bridge. This is the bridge road. The, the, the rec center was going to be this side. Is going to be off of the road. Off of the road. Off of the road. Off of the road. At the bottom of on the bridge road side property of Tuscany Point. Anyway, this is the same place we're thinking. This. So that all being said, that's what it looks like. One of the keys to this is access to maintain this would be an access road that comes all the way up and around and up to the top and you can show on the plan there in order to access the road. This would be fully up to St. Clair. Up St. Clair would have to um, work with us in the study so we don't have to stop them with this project. Um, this would be standing to the park, park in their community, still need to be there to be there for. Um, in their community and operation maintenance has to do with negotiating with the community. That being said, uh, that's what the flood map looks like with that pond in place. It shaves about I think it's 73 or 74 lots out of the flood site. But there are ones that don't hit all the yellow square ones. Want to get it back all the time? We're still going to get it back. It doesn't, it, it can't, it's not big enough, it can't shave enough water down to get it to the point. So, as Kevin mentioned at the beginning of this whole thing, I'm on the round circle. The key is we need to convey the water through the through the bridge hole. Um, putting it in depth so it helps, the question it helps, doesn't solve our problem. Um, in the future, we want Bethel Park, we want some player to try to capture water at the headwaters, at least at a slower rate, absolutely. But are we going to just bridge the world and wait until that may happen in the future? I mean, the, 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 the largest item with the facility of that size is even though it does quote unquote help these structures, these are not the folks that you're lending to the last week got hit. They're still going to get hit if you build that. And 
when you spend $4 million and say, what did I get for it? Well, people that flooded once in the last 20 years or 30 years who never come to a meeting, that's the people you're impacting. Where the folks that live along the stream, that's the ones that's getting hit with a lot of frequency. Option four doesn't do it now. If you get a grant, multi municipal, for $4 million, and you get an agreement with those communities that do something, you don't have to maintain it forever. It's a good thing, but to do that and not some of the other options, it doesn't get you there because people are going to say you spent four million dollars in the Yeah, yeah, sure. so yeah. that's fifty thousand dollars a year. They're not flushing out by that year. You know. So here's the summary. This is this is the uh, options one through three. Uh, eliminates all the flooding basically. It doesn't eliminate it, but it um, reduces the risk. First two options, again, if you remember, I said there's 173 occupied structures. We took two, we built it, 171 are saved. Option two, um, we took six structures, so 169 structures saved. She said it took six structures. There's six structures. Six structures. Uh, option three, Again, we have a problem about this. The increase for that roundabout and everything is really not that much because of all the works the same. You can see it's only what a million and a half to two million dollars, which is option one. Um, option four, it's four million dollars, but it's only it's only um moving to 79 and the line of seven structure money for it. Good thing, but it doesn't solve the problem of people that being flooded every single time. So that, that is the options we come up with, and uh, uh, we're able to go in house to see what the impacts are and what the cost would be. As they indicated, that's a lot, big chunk of money, it's whichever option we choose. It doesn't have to be all spent at the same time, we've done in phases. Um, and there's a number of grants out there now that we have to study in place. There's a, there's a large number of grants out there. That will be open here in, in the near future. Let's not apply for the um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has a few, a few grants open up every year or so. Obviously, with COVID, the this as well. And a lot of people are still trying to work with grants from last year. But, so the new ones have no. But, Army Corps has two or three grants. FEMA has an aviation system. CFA, the X13 money, so they're in the flood mitigation program in that area. That would have to plot this money. They also have the PA small water sewer program. There are aspects of that that would have to apply to this. Um, CFA, the CFA also has a larger H2O grants. Um, it's got a large variety of projects to go after, but it's a grant that can apply for it. And then you have the county and DC, you get a number of grants that we can adopt. And DC, B, and G, 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 E, E, F, S, are available. That's a lot of money that we're using right now to do J, and the park project. is G, and So the grants are out there and they're available. Now we have a site. Once the borough gets the plan, we can start getting the permits and all the grants. And in picking the plan, I kind of, uh, Read through everything again last week, all the studies. In my mind, it's it's the borough, like phase one. But phase one doesn't change through all the plans. So to me, phase one doesn't change. You can't build phase three, or you probably shouldn't, until phase two, Baldwin Street is done. So I break it into just those three projects. I would go aggressively for funding. For phase one, because if you build phase one, which is the portion down here, it helps phase two because we give more area downstream for the water to get through, get that permitted and built while that's being built. Because now you've got a project that's not funded, you have a reason why phase two should be funded. By then, vet through all these questions tonight on Baldwin Street and have a series of meetings that you can discuss with the property owner 
ones it's impacted, what's best for them, too, because, you know, if we move by our whole road, we put these structures, we get rid of one side of Baldwin Street, maybe the other side of Baldwin Street has a big negative impact. I mean, you could get to the place where all Baldwin Street, the right answer is all the structures get raised, and you just change Baldwin Street, you fill the whole thing in, raise it six feet, and you put a new top. I mean, the amount of structures that you're talking about, I mean, it's not actually long. So if you get phase one while you're building it, work to solve phase two. What's the right answer for the borough? Because now you know what the flood numbers say. Um, there's been a lot of discussion tonight about the, the traffic engineer, you're going a pedestrian corridor. I mean, it may be as simple as ask trans. Yeah, I think it's uh, traffic planning. Is doing it. Ask them for an amendment to that. For they look at traffic through that corridor before you, instead of going from one end of town to the other, how do we just get traffic through this corridor? See if they can look at it with pedestrian to give some guidance to planning commission. That would be a good idea. Um, because we've got to solve pedestrians if we get rid of the sidewalk. We're going to solve pedestrians, we should we solve traffic and include that. And then come back with, okay, for phase two, here's what we do. And phase three, again, there's not many tweaks in phase three. Then phase four, that pawn, let's go start talking to our neighbors and see if we can get a multi municipal grant and do that up front as well. So if you do phase one, you do phase four, you work on phase two, because that's going to take a while. I don't think anybody here tonight knows exactly what you want to do with phase two. I have a lot of good questions. Um, there's two bridges involved. You know, what's the county going to say? Um, what do you want to do with your bridge? Because it's a lot of money, you know, to maintain it. Because if you decide you don't want to maintain that bridge, then you just want to move traffic all to existing Bower Hill Road, now Baldwin Street's a dead end. You don't impact any businesses. And there's no traffic on that road. And all your properties and tax spaces stay the same. Um, do you want to do that as a community? Do you, you know, how's that impact you to get there to Baldwin Street? Because now you're fixing probably just that intersection where your engineer tried to pull out the other day and there was a T boom. Um, because that intersection is tough to get through. I mean, it's just everybody who lives here has to know that. So, um, so that's a bigger question. We know now what the answer is from the flooding side. But now you've got this other question, what do you want to do? How many problems do you want to impact? Do you want Baldwin Street to a dead end? Do you want it to go through? Do you want to replace that bridge? Do you want to just have that be a you know a warmer green space? Because it'll become some of those lots can become green space parking. Um, you know, I think you can answer those questions over a longer period of time because phase one and phase four is going to take a, a little bit of time to get that funding. So now that you have a study, you can apply for all the grants. One of the requirements are you have to have that study. So you never have that. Have that now. You have options. Council, after planning commission vet system, take it under consideration, pick the options for phase one, three, four, and then phase two, just say we're gonna kick that the planning to figure out traffic, the flooding. And we know what the models look like that way while you're getting phase one thing. Because then you're making a big impact. Um, and then phase one, check it off. You move phase three or phase two. If you got phase two figured out, then it's Baldwin Street. So we have some ideas for Baldwin Street temporarily. I'm not going to kick them out yet tonight, but there may be some temporary pumps in your future just to. Um, Get past some flooding issues. That, you know, um, it won't be screw pumps, but it's something at least for these quick events of the first that need to be used. You can't get them permitted, but emergency situation may be worth having on hand. So, and they're not that expensive. So, there's some ideas we have there. So, we'd work with council. I think that would be a, a good way to move forward. Um, to show progress because from where we started, I guess, a year and a half ago, but today, 
And then we've got all projects to add on the list accomplished. And now we're moving into the next phase, which was get this study done and then figure out what the next big piece was to do. And I think we've identified phase one what to do. And keep maintaining everything that we've done. And program it. I'm going to spend some money there. Probably work's going to have to have a little bit of equipment. They have the right stuff to maintain these, these items, but um, long term, I'll take it away. So, it's, it's a big deal. so, phase one is the cornerstone, basically. Yep. Yeah, and what we found, was, and even with your park projects, I think you've seen this, you've been getting money because you successfully completed projects. I mean, you got a lot of funding in 18 months that other people didn't get. We, could, we, we were spending the money. We were successfully spending money on projects, and people can come out and see that we did this, and we did this, we did this. And that's a big thing. So your track record is now that you're not getting the money and you're not spending it. You're getting it, you're going to projects, you're committing local funding. You know, council has, has committed the part that was needed and, and continues to do so. so um, so your track record's good. And that's the end. Any other questions about us? Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do ask those. <laughs> I do need to talk. I didn't close them. I always saw that. <laughs> All right. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? And you can take August 15th. Um, uh, you know, to you know, all. And, 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 like I said, I remember when we walked the street how many years ago. And, you know, what the, the difference is now between then and now. Um, so it doesn't happen at night. <clears throat> you know, so it, and they do see people calling. Um, and uh, it's, you know, I think he gave us some good advice. It's a matter of do we know that this is where we need to go? We have to get the money. If we're going to go out there, we have to have this piece right. to go out there. Yeah. Well, I. Uh, do we want to take and recommend and start? We, we, we recommend fit, uh, option one of phase one to yeah. move forward with that to the borough and, and talk about, you know, think about yeah, it's, it's, it's all a their decision. Right. So we can have, we can usually, you know, in the option one, it doesn't change. Right. It's, right. it's pretty right. much consistent. Right. And, you know, that channel is behind it doesn't even. Sell. That's right. You know, for 
twenty million dollars. Right. So we all know the price tag of it. We all know it's we're supposed to go like there. And it's you know, we know who would like to see it now. So that could be a quick enough. Yeah. We might as well at least that. I mean, because yeah. from what their drawings were, they only had like two puny retention parts. Yeah. So yeah, they're going to live in all the home, it's not it's not to help anybody else. Right, right, right. I think we should bring in our state and the county representatives to help us with the Is it the opinion of the planning commission that phase four should be considered by council? I think that's the question. That, 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 yes, I think that to start the conversation. To start the conversation. <laughs> Not got the So we're gonna we recommended phase four, which was the upper St. Clair detention facility. Yeah, at least to start that discussion. But like when you look at options one, two, and three, it's option four. We're we'll recommending that option four be created also it can also be created as a phase four and then but it's not needed. When you look it's at option four. one, two, three, it's uh, not needed, but it's one of those ones that it can help. And they can help with the larger storms. It's not going to hurt, that's for sure. Right, correct. And you're going to continually have people ask the question, in our opinion, unless you've got that. Yeah. It is. How do you manage that undermining? For, for that area? Yeah. It would, you would have to stabilize it when you get to pond so that you don't put more water into it. So it has to be part of the project, stabilize it. Which is doable. I mean, it's unfortunately, unfortunately, here we have a lot of lines in this area. So. Yeah. Was that part of the price tag? Yeah, to stabilize it because the mines are. Okay. The mines are actually, most of the mines are just above creek elevation, not below. Some of the deep mines are, but most of them, they kind of daylighted right in that area. But, but if you look at budget wise, option 1A is $23 million. And option four was like four million. So it's twenty-seven million. So it's twenty-seven million total. But this whole project could be done and save up all the structures for twenty-three million. I just don't understand how this is kind of belt and suspenders because people drive past that. I don't think I've been in a meeting. Somebody hasn't asked why we're not putting stormwater upstream. That one is one that people go past, and I think we get a definite no. They're not going to like to do it. But I think the conversation from like the Nautilus is go to Cannonsburg Dam yeah. upstream, and then what was described tonight is not Cannonsburg Dam. Right. It's really yeah. another de facto McLaughlin or Mallfield. It's just it's just bigger. Yeah, yeah. Cannonsburg Dam is what you need to solve the problem if you want to do a pond. You want to do it by detention upstream. Yeah. There's nowhere else you can put Cannonsburg Dam. Right. Unless you want to take out the folks in Clare or have that whole Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can I make a suggestion? Sure. By all means. Do that together. We've been at this for two hours. Mm -hmm. Would it be of any disadvantage to think about what we've learned tonight and not do a motion to council? Or would there be more of a benefit to make a book, to move it on to council? I, I think it, my humble opinion, I, I think we make a we move phase one forward because we know that it's gonna it's the cornerstone, it's right. the ledge pad, right. if you will, for everything else that okay. could potentially happen afterwards. And so why, you know. To me, it's kind of a no-brainer. At least get the process started. We may not get funding grants for fifteen years, and, and we always so yeah. it's not like this isn't the first time we've seen. It. Yeah. All right. So the planning commission discussion is really involved. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really what we need to see more. Yeah, that's a right. That's that's where we got to. Yeah. yeah, that's a conversation we have. Council, with what's where they're where is their head at? You know, that's a conversation you have with people of Baltimore Street too. Yeah, you know, people that actually live there. 
Yeah, I don't think it's fair to, for us to sit here and go, hey, we're going to do this ball retreat to right. go down and find out what their thoughts are. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah. Right. talk about people's houses and lives. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. I mean, the, the phase one doesn't impact, you know, loss of houses and. and right. Okay. Um, and, you know, Two thousand eighteen was when we had the, the last big one and this was kind of a reminder that you know stuff needs to happen. So okay. I'll make a motion and, and you guys can either say yay or <laughs> <laughs> I, I make a motion that we forward on recommendation to at least initiate phase one option. One, two, three, or yeah. Phase one. Phase one. No, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. You know, I think as far as you know, phase two and phase three, right. we'll yes. do things. It takes some time to do that, Jeff. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the last subject here, which is the active transportation plan. Uh, on July 12, 2021, Bridge Road Council approved the traffic planning and design to complete the active transportation contract. Right now, we're in the process of creating the steering committee. And uh, do you want to talk about who's on the steering committee so far? Uh, yes, I think our, our goal is, uh, like you said, we just got our contract with right. council board there two weeks ago. Uh, we want to get the project moving in the month. Our goal is to have a steering committee that's well represented and moving this forward. Uh, right now, we have the working group, which is the members from the council that are on there, uh, plus the planning commission code. Um, we have uh, the PennDOT uh, safety manager, he already volunteered to be on it. Two from county planning, uh, one's their mobility manager, so that's a good representative. The police chief, so we have law enforcement bodies in there. What we're talking about actually gets enforced, uh, and myself. So that brings up to 12. I'm right. uh, talking to the consultant, he said you have 12, no 15 people. Right. Uh, steering committee would be, I think it's like three, four times. Right. Uh, we would meet back to all the council and have a board to the planning commission this month. So what I'm hoping to do is I'll shoot an email off to the working group, the, the group that interviewed, and basically that's push this to say, hey, uh, we want to wrap up uh, appointments to the steering committee by a date, and then that we can get our first meeting on board with the consultant sometime in August. So check your email, maybe think of someone, I know mean, Justine's been thinking outside the box, but uh, some people who are Dr. Strain from the vision source up there on on the uh, street, uh, uh, part of the steering committee. She's agreed. She was okay. very active in Brookline okay. with her community. So. I don't know about the pressure of being on the parking before she, she doesn't know. Parking might be a good part for her right now. Because she she hasn't had to be on that. Okay. Something like this, which is it's a, only a couple of times. Right, and that's right, right, right. Be, right. Yeah. Just because they're depending on county planning folks and the police chief, our goal was to do these meetings during the day and we'll do them like quasi super in person so that it's possible for them. Okay. Okay. And it's not much of a commitment because the project is on the last that most seven months. Right. So this right. isn't like a lot of five year appointments like target. Okay. Right. Um council report for plan. For the six companies that have responded to the RFP for the comprehensive plan that have been selected for in-person interviews by the home committee. Uh, the four companies to be interviewed are on October, August 5th, Mackin and HRG, and August 19th, we're going to interview Claymont and the Evolve. That's the second day. Um, August 19th. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns that we need to address? Um, anybody else in the public want to say anything? 
What I didn't think was much was, was mentioning trying to piggyback some of the traffic study Correct. on that we had on the active transportation. Right. The only thing that he said that I was a little just like this flood plan is very broad and comprehensive of multiple phases. I would have hoped that you would ask for that the, the traffic consultants to provide another proposal separate and straight from the right. active transportation. I ask them to provide a separate one that is, is, is larger than overlay so that you can start to digest that. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Bowden, uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is ended. Thank you. Thank you.